We are still talking cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. The West Indies men will battle Zimbabwe in the second and final test at Queen's Sports Club in Bulawayo starting Sunday morning Caribbean time. The first match ended, of course, in a draw earlier this week after being heavily affected by rain. But there were rays of sunlight for the Caribbean men with Tate Narayan Chandapol converting his maiden century into a double ton as he and Captain Craig Brathwick set a West Indies record 336 runs for the first wicket. Nikhil Uttam Chandani joins us now to preview the match. Nikhil, from what you saw in the first test, do you think the Windies should put away Zimbabwe in the second test to win the series? I think, um, Lance, once the weather permits, and that's the key because I know the weather has been um, a bit on and off in terms of the rain in Zimbabwe at the moment, talking to some of the players. But once the weather allows, I think the West Indies have shown more than enough in all three facets of the game, specifically with the bat in hand. You know, there were questions about whether this batting lineup would be able to function in spin-heavy conditions. But I think having someone like a Tejna in China, Paul Haling from Guyana, who's used to similar conditions, and then Craig Braffitt, who's been in the form of his life, build that platform. For me, I think there's enough in the tank to set a big total on the board if they do bat first, or to chase even on a tough day five pitch, as we saw it start to, to deteriorate and become a bit challenging for batting late in that first test. So I think, to answer your question, if the weather does permit, um, I would think West Indies are clear favourites to, to defeat Zimbabwe in this series. Nickel, given the pitch conditions, would you make any changes to the bowling roster going into this match? Well, actually, I was quite surprised to see Roston Chase and his use. I was surprised that he didn't bowl a lot more overs um, in the match itself. He batted at five and six, which is not something we saw in Australia where he batted at number eight. In the first innings, he bowled 14 overs. In the second, he bowled 12. I would have loved to have another wicket-taking option. I don't think Jamal Warrican is really that alternate wicket-taker. So for that reason, I think uh, Chase will retain his place. But in terms of one change maybe that you could see, maybe Akima Aroj, who obviously is getting older, but he's still fit. They may just want to manage his fitness going into South Africa and also have the opportunity to look at someone like a Shannon Gabriel going into that important series. Remember, this is not in the World Test Championship. So I think it's a bit of an opportunity for the West Indies selectors and coaching staff to experiment a bit with their makeup of the team. Whether we see Nkrumah Bonabat uh, is yet to, is debatable because Ray Marifa just scored a 50. So if I had to make one change, I think just to maintain his fitness and keep an eye on him, I would probably go with Shannon Gabriel to get a little luck going into that South Africa series. Yeah, I hear you, Nikhil, but uh, looking at it uh, from a, a slightly different angle, um, and this is something I thought about quite a lot, actually. Um, and I would be tempted, actually, to either drop or rest. I mean, whichever word you use, uh, depending on who the player is, they use different words these days. Um, but Kyle Mears, Roston Chase, or even Jason Holder. And I would be looking to bring Shannon Gabriel into the team because I think Gabriel offers a genuine wicket-taking option. Um, and and I, I'm also looking at it and I'm thinking, if I don't have Kyle Mears, I should still get enough runs from the remaining batsmen to beat Zimbabwe. If I don't have Roston Chase, I am thinking similarly. Um, but if we're going to have a, a, a pitch where it's going to be difficult for the bowlers, where it's going to be batsman friendly, then I'm looking for that extra wicket-taking option and for me, Shannon Gabriel would, would fit that. And I would be looking to drop one of the batting options. Um, I must say I'm looking more at a Kyle Mears. What do you think? Well, I think it's, I, I personally would, I could see the Roston Chase point, but I do think it's too big of a risk. And I'll tell you why. Remember that we've lost over, close to a day when you add up the amount of overs we lost due to rain in that first test. So we didn't really see the true nature of a day five pitch. And if you look at history in Zimbabwe, that very dry surface um, tends to crack up, tends to have a lot of rough areas which Gudekesh Monti exploited on day five. So for me, I think, even though he hasn't been, you know, sort of aggressive self Roston Chase in terms of his wicket-taking deliveries, I thought he was pretty inconsistent. I still think you need to have at least two spin options. Don't think Craig Braffitt really merits that out-and-out -out spinner title. And for that reason, I think I would retain Chase in the team. In terms of um, Kyle Mears, 
I think it could it's, it is possible, but judging the way that Craig Braffitt used him with the ball in hand, I was surprised to see him get the new ball. It tells me that they really value what he brings as sort of that impact bowler. Whenever he's brought on into the attack for short bursts, two to three over spells, they find that he can hit that good length area and cause problems, you know, getting a bit of seam movement. I've saved the best for last, Ricardo. Jason Holder, you're dropping him. I know that um, some people have mentioned the fact that, you know, he's bowled off spin, etc. But I don't think it's a case of, you know, he's not performing. I just think they're using him wrong. In the first innings, he was the fifth bowler brought into the attack. And in the second, the fourth bowler. What has changed? Because this is a Jason Holder that's been used to bowling first change, used to bowling with that new ball and being able to, to swing the new ball. I think he needs to be used a lot better, especially on a pitch where we saw a bit of variable bounce. With that height, he could be a rare handful. And remember, this is a man that scored 100 in Zimbabwe in 2017. So don't forget his contribution with the bat in hand. Yeah, I, I hear you once again, Nikhil, but it, here's the deal for me, right? So you pointed out how Jason Holder is being used. Um, and you also pointed out how um, Carl Mears is being used. Are you suggesting to me then that Carl Mears would be a better option coming in at first change? By the way, I was a little surprised and was not in favor when I saw Carl Mears bowl as early as he did in that first innings, that he would be a better option than Shannon Gabriel. Well, I think based on the swing that Jason Holden and Kyle Mears gets, I think they may feel that Kyle Mears maybe want to extract a bit more out of that new ball a bit earlier. But personally, I think it was a failed experiment. I don't think... Um, I, I'd much rather see a Kyle Mears come in to bowl with that older ball because he has the ability to, have to get reverse swing, but he also has the ability to hit that consistent in-between length, which can be a problem for batters who are set. He did it in England early in 2022, and then he did it very well against Bangladesh when they came and the West Indies won the series. So I don't know if you could say he's a better option, but I definitely agree with you on the point that you have to find a way to get Shannon Gabriel in the team. Whether you sacrifice Kyle Mears is a big decision, and also because of what he brings to the batting. I felt they really missed the trick with his aggressive nature. Remember, this is a T20 opener. On that day four, I felt they had a chance to even set him up the order and try to put some runs on the board. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's going to be an interesting decision. But for me, I think him and Jason Holder bring a lot to this team with both bat and ball. Uh, too much that I think you can sacrifice. Yeah, and the only reason why I'm not putting um, Raymond Rifa in this discussion, by the way, is because he scored a half century in the second innings of the first test. And it's going to be difficult to um, drop someone who really has been looking for that performance to give him a bit of confidence and then to drop him uh, the test following that. But for me, I just believe we have to find a way to get Shannon Gabriel into this lineup for um, the second test, I think it's important to see where he's at, especially because I think he will be needed for the South Africa series. And I don't want him going into a South Africa series where he's playing his first test match in a long, long time. And I think this Zimbabwe second test is a great opportunity to, to, to get him out there and get him having the feel of playing test cricket again. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think we possibly will see him, you know, in that 11. I think it would probably be at the peril of, of Akeem Arroch, who I think, you know, he's getting on in age, is very effective, but wasn't really used both the least overs out of the seamers in that first test, 15 overs in the first innings and just three in the second. So judging by those metrics and also the fact that, you know, his age, etc., I would love to see a Shannon Gabriel in. As you said, you want him you know, locked and loaded for when you get to South Africa with the much greener surfaces. And on Ray Marifa, I think, you know, something we do in the West Indies is we tend to not give our players enough chance or enough time to, to sort of create a rhythm. And it's something that Travis Head and the Australian team spoke about a lot. They love the fact that their players can get a run of five to ten test matches, which, of course, the West Indies don't play as much test cricket as Australia. But having that run and that time to really get into test cricket and the challenge that it is, I think it's something that could benefit Remarifa. So he's got a 50 now. If we're going to back him at number three, let's see him get the opportunity. He didn't play in the Australian series due to injury. For these two tests coming up in South Africa, let's see if we can really utilize him at three before we make another decision. Yeah, Lance, Mariah, Nikhil, I just don't think we need all that batting against the Zimbabwe bowling attack that I saw in the first test. There is no way we should need all that batting against that Zimbabwe bowling attack, Lance.
Yeah, I, I can't say I disagree with you, um, Ricardo. Uh, Nickel, great talking to you as usual. Um, uh, don't forget that test match starts on Sunday morning, early Caribbean time. And uh, don't forget that tonight on Sportsmax, uh, it's uh, the second day of the te- third day of the test match between uh, Australia and India being played in Nagpur. Starts 11 o'clock Jamaica time, 12 midnight tonight. Back with more on the zone after this. <laughs>